welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode, we spank the beginning of the end for the Harry Potter franchise within the overall Wizarding World, constructed by J.K. Rowling. With the seventh movie adaptation derived from her works, the seventh and final book in the Harry Potter series, the 2010 fantasy adventure Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 1. Directed once again by David Yates, who now takes the series on to its long-anticipated conclusion. The decision was made to split the last book into two movies to give it the attention to detail and love that it so deserved in order to end this epic series. And so indeed, this is the first of two movies chronicling the events of Rowling's climatic final showdown. Now, Again, like every single review so far in this series, before I get started, I just want to issue a disclaimer, as I have done, like I said, every every review so far. I can't comment on the movie with respect to the books, having never actually read any one of them. So, I'll be coming purely from the point of view of the movie itself and the overall Harry Potter franchise, rather than going into detail with regards to its closeness to the source material. Again, as a muggle, I am not remotely even qualified to even attempt to do so. But I am enjoying everybody's comments and kind of um, insinuations and everything else like that with regards to how the books do marry with the films. That is actually really quite interesting, so please do keep that up in the comments section below. Now, following the events of the last movie in the series, we find our plucky trio, Harry Potter, uh, as played by again, Daniel Radcliffe, and his two best friends, Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger, as played by Rupert Grin and um, Emma Watson, respectively, who have formed, you know, the main protagonists throughout the entire series. We now find them in hiding, living their lives, you know, or, well, not living, leaving their lives at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry behind in an attempt to keep Harry safe from the sinister forces of the Dark Lord, Voldemort, as played by Ralph Fiennes, who must kill Harry in order for himself to live and return to full strength. After the Order of the Phoenix and his friends evacuate Harry to safety, the Ministry of Magic falls, leading the way for Voldemort and his followers, the Death Eaters, to make their attack, which leaves these three friends out on their own, cut off from the rest of the resistance, in order to find a wheat to defeat in order to find a way to defeat Voldemort once and for all. They might want some wheat, but potentially they want defeat too. Searching for items known as Horcruxes, known to carry Separate parts of Voldemort's soul, Harry, Ron and Hermione undertake a number of perilous missions, including one right in the heart of the Ministry of Magic itself, in order to retrieve and destroy each and every single one of these items before it's too late, all the while struggling to cope with the loss of those close to them against a new world order of control and persecution of those not deemed to be worthy. So the way this movie has been produced follows as a true extension to the overall series and represents the bleak and desperate situation faced by the wizarding world. The heart-wrenching finale of the last movie and the fraught feelings and heavy burden carried by the main trio. As the first part in a duet, it leaves a lot unanswered and it can feel like a little bit of an anti-crescendo by the time we do get to the end. But I do think it deals with a lot of topics and content that needed to really be considered as part of the overall story. To allow this second half to really just concentrate on this final showdown that of course ensues. And it doesn't leave everything hanging, it doesn't. It fends off and feeds off many of the elements from the previous movies, many of which come directly into play within this instalment. And in some sense, part one does act as a satisfying kind of closer, kind of rounding off in some of the spectacle and intrigue that we had witnessed over the series, whilst on its own terms, sets up a new mystery and one that lasts, you know, one last all stakes quest with a single sight now on the series end game. But indeed, it simply ends, you know, as most films kind of split in this way do. So not unexpectedly so, you know. It's only telling half the story, and there, then there's no mystery to that, you know? Absolutely giving it the reverence and passion it deserves after we have followed these stories unfold over the past nine years. This entry takes the darkness of the last movie and places it centre-fold 
everybody is weary and afraid. And all told, this is very much a more adult take on the franchise. Taking into account just how the main cast have grown and found themselves in each of their roles. We get a lot more insight into Voldemort's inner circle, and scarily so, into some of his methods, which include actual torture sequences, not yet seen directly in the franchise to date, which do certainly hit a nerve. The stakes are much higher here, and the persecution felt by those not of magical purity, so to speak, is captured with true observation, insight and decorum. Terrifying events are transpiring, and the movie makes this way felt. The level of emotional range given by the main cast, especially Grint and Watson here, has developed significantly over the past few movies, and is exemplified here as the group go through a series of emotionally draining and challenging events that threaten the very fabric of their reality. The emotional burden they carry is absolutely obvious and really does allow the audience to connect in a meaningful and invested way throughout. And Hogwarts has certainly taught them very well, you know? There's some serious skills being taunted in this entry for sure, and bravery. Well, this outshines even the best of them as they undertake, you know, the perilous journey without even a second thought against something which has been a big part of their lives ever since they first met on the ever-faithful Hogwarts Express all of those years ago. Throughout it all, um, like all the movies so far, even for as, as an adult, it tends to lean for, you know, that, that kind of adult kind of content. It never loses sight of the fact that it is still a Harry Potter movie. This is what I love about this franchise. Amongst the movies, Heavy Heart, it starts, it does start to emerge a true adventure, capturing a brilliantly delightful, playful streak at times that reminds you of the series' origins in these dark times. It gets very nostalgic. It has a big heart, all told. It's a heavy one, indeed, and it can get very intense especially the few opening sequences and scenes that we have. But it builds to something much more involved, very much invested in the franchise, being a fantastic ensemble of characters from across the series, many, fam no, you know, many familiar allies, and most certainly more than a few old foes. The score, this time penned by Alexandra Despair, um, or Desplat, sorry, Despair, might be despairing, but Desplat, in his debut for the franchise, is simply amazing. In its own right, he brings an absolutely breathtakingly haunting score with some menacingly stark and atmospheric notes wrapped in a very dark energy that captures the essence of the cinematography that's going on on screen and the emotional core of the movie. In fact, the score is one of the most prominent features this time around and balances the scale and expectation of the movie against a very rich tapestry of musical awe and wonder. Overall, this sets a further bar for the Harry Potter franchise, bringing another emotionally charged and invested entry that increases the threshold and the range of the main cast once again, asking of them to step once in more into the breach and dig deep to bring us a connection to these characters like nothing we have seen before. There's some real pain to be found here, both physical and emotional, and some darker, more adult elements that shift the tone of the franchise into the more sinister recesses of the Wizarding World. And this reverberates with despair and desperation of the character's plight. It's a movie that brings elements from each of the previous entries full circle, and although as the first part it does leave many questions unanswered by the end, yes it does, you know, setting the scene for the much-anticipated finale, it also managed to find its own voice and becomes, against the cold and brutal attacks that ensue, a very warm and sentimental movie all told. A burdened movie that, that does know its place in the franchise, feeding into the last leg of the journey and showdown still yet to come, but still an absolutely fantastical adventure in its own right, just as a Potter movie should be. So... That brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, and other movie-related content. Absolutely loved having you here at Southwest Movie Talk, and definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.